Okay, this is part two of jury duty. So um, let me just tell you a little bit more about the defense case. Um, what the defense said was this golf pro had an injury from when he was 10 years old uh, playing soccer and that he had an operation very recently. And they gave the date of the operation and the defense attorney said so it was a month uh, before he was pulled over and he was still healing, except it was actually three months. The date was not a month, but three months different. So that was something that came up. And he said it was called hammer toes, and the idea was on his right foot, he had this condition, and the, oh, there was two witnesses, actually, besides the cop, there was the defendant himself. And um, he basically, on the stand, said, well, you know, I this was a serious condition, and I, I couldn't stand on that foot. And what the prosecution uh, said during uh, uh, closing is, well, you know, why didn't he uh, just use the other foot, the left foot, and to do that? But he said, the defendant said that it was so serious that he shouldn't even be walking, but that he's very stubborn. But the thing is, is he was, well, I'm kind of telling you what was going to happen in deliberation. So I'll wait on that. And then uh, the defense attorney asked his uh, client when he was on the stand, why did you uh, decline the sobriety test? And he said he was scared uh, to do it because he felt persecuted by the cop. And uh, that, was the, that was basically it. Okay, so they say, well, you know, it's uh, 4.30 now. We've been there since 8 a.m. Um, and... Uh, they said, well, you know, we can start deliberations now, and uh, you can pick them up tomorrow if you need to. So, okay, we got in, and we were supposed to pick a, a, a four-person, but we didn't. Uh, there were, uh, actually, we had two people that were unofficial uh, four-persons. Uh, one, I, we didn't tell each other uh, each other's names until after it was all over. We chatted a little bit on the way out of the building, but Sean was the guy that's the wise-ass guy, and he was one of the uh, co-foremen, and there was a gal, and she is just out of law school. She just passed the bar, hadn't practiced law yet, and, uh, you know, in her early 20s, probably 24, 25. And they were sitting on opposite ends of the table, and th they both were strong personalities. And we sort of agreed that, well, we're not going to follow the rules, there won't be a four-person, we'll just pick one at the end. <laughs> And they did the, they acted as co uh, four persons, and they had uh, basically opposite positions. We ran around the table, and, and Sean said that he was for guilty, and the rest of us, there's six of us, said not guilty. But when we asked, well, do you think he did it? We all thought he was drunk, but the question was, had the prosecution uh, met their burden? And, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and that was a real issue. Um, and the gal that was um, to my left, uh, the co four person, I don't know her name, uh, she was basically, she said, well, we got to make sure we cross all the I's and dot all the T's because she just got out of law school and passed the bar. So she, that was her job. And Sean was basically saying, look, this guy is guilty. And uh, those two were doing most of the talking and the rest of us were coming in a little bit. Um, and... You know, I, w I was basically, my position was basically, look, if the cop isn't, uh, uh, if the cop isn't lying, this guy uh, really looks guilty beyond a reasonable doubt if you look at all the evidence. And what happened, <coughs> it's working great, <coughs> um, what happened uh, is, is that we started going through all the, the details. And the, the, the gal on my left, uh, her idea was, with the evidence that we have, is the burden met by the prosecution? Um, and then on the other side of it is, um, can we rely on what the cop is saying? Uh, basically, everyone distorts things to a certain degree, and we wanted to kind of look at all that. But what ended up happening is, and it gave me a lot of respect for the jury process because we all really did work together. And uh, those folks were all intelligent folks. Let me tell you who was there. Uh, there was one kid from uh, FSU uh, who was um, uh, probably 18 or 19. Uh, there were uh, 
three folks that were, let's see, um, there were two folks that were um, in their 70s, uh, grandparents, seniors. Uh, there was Sean, about a 58, but very young guy in his head. And then there was uh, 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 yours uh, truly. So we have the gal to my left, and uh, we have uh, a, a man and a woman in their 70s, uh, both very bright and uh, participated a lot, and uh, the kid from FSU, and then uh, uh, Sean there. Um, and, uh, and everybody contributed, and we talked about this, and, and things started to change. And what had happened is, though, the defense story started to come apart. Um, my big issue was, where is this Officer Smith? Uh, that was part of it. Um, but other po people, po we started talking about the, the red light and stuff, because some of us had been out in there. We thought, is the cop telling the truth or not? Because we thought that light would be flashing. Is he lying about that? Maybe other things. And we kind of looked at that. The gal on my left, we were looking at uh, how reliable are these tests, and why did he refuse these other tests? And the, the whole idea of having hammer foot came up, whether he was, you know, lifting his leg up or not. And then the idea that the defense had sort of seemed like they were cutting corners. And, uh, you know, like, for instance, the, the, the time of the operation was greater, and he was walking around at this function driving with his, you know, his right foot. He shouldn't have even been walking, he said. Um, and he could have used his other leg. Um, and then, well, with the Officer Smith, basically, you know, what I said is, well, what happened here? They didn't subpoena the guy. Did Officer Smith kind of radio this other cop to go, go find this guy, chase him down and harass him, and then, and then arrest him for drunk driving? That didn't uh, seem to make a lot of sense either. Um, and then as far as being intimidated by the cops and not taking the sobriety test, you know, we started looking at, well, he had a few drinks, uh, Maybe he's afraid because he's drunk, uh, or maybe, you know, he, is he really afraid? He, he just basically said he was, he was scared, and he didn't. And we kind of weighed all of that stuff. And uh, essentially what happened is um, that whole idea of uh, the prosecution meeting the burden and looking at all these holes in the defense case, after a while it started to pile up. We thought that the prosecution's case was very weak not only because of what they presented, but how they presented it, because it really was somebody that was still having training wheels doing the job, and he made some mistakes, and he could have done a better job. On the other hand, the, the, the fence was certainly, um, wasn't very convincing when you started looking at the evidence. And so uh, at 6.15, we reached a, a verdict of, of guilty. All, all six of us agreed that he was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, <clears throat> And when we left, when we, you know, said, yes, he's guilty, and he, they polled the jury, the defense was completely shocked. Um, uh, in his face, you could see it. The defense attorney was completely shocked. Um, but anyway, uh, it was a really interesting experience, and um, I'm glad it was over in a day. It probably uh, wasn't good for my cold, but... Um, I learned a lot, I had a good time, and I feel like, yeah, it is a responsibility, and I'm glad it was a DUI case that only lasted a day, and uh, not a major uh, felony. Take care, folks.